A terrific Tuesday to you and welcome to Draw News Interactive with me, Mabita Sibidi. We're live from digital address GA0992539 in Kukumemle, Accra. You can also watch us live on DSTV Channel 421 and Go TV Channel 144. To join the interactive train on Facebook and Twitter, we are Draw News on TV. Now to our first story, presidents are elected to ensure a country's development. But in Africa, most presidents expect to be praised for ensuring their countries develop. For example, currently there's a debate about projects, existing or non-existing. It started when President Nana Kufuado asserted that the capital investments made by the Mahama administration cannot be seen and are ghost projects. And then there was a response from the office of the former president expressing shock at the twist. Here's an expert of the statement. Let's read. So let's go to the attention of the office of Honorable John Dramani Mahama has been drawn to the false comments made by the President Nana Akufuado to the effect that the unprecedented capital investments made by the Mahama administration cannot be seen in our ghost projects. It is regrettable that the President Akufuado has yet again failed to exhibit condo in his speech, this time to the chiefs and people of Nkorazana in Bronghafu region. Uh, it is even more worrying when there's overwhelming evidence of the massive investment made in the provision of various projects for the people of Ghana. And let's go to, so the ro so for the benefit of the president, I wish to provide a list of some projects undertaken by the John Dramani Mahama administration between 2013 and 2016 in the Bronghafu region. So these are the road sectors and he, sh he lists them, uh, the s different roads. Let's see if we can get more of that statement. So that's the road sector. So he continues, in addition to the above, the following road projects had been awarded uh, when, uh, were under construction at the time the NDC left office in January 2017. So he lists the roads there. And let's go to the health sector. And he says, a total of 121 uh, CHIPS compounds were constructed across the region. The region also benefited from the National Hospital Equipment Replacement Program under which modern health equipment were installed in public hospitals. Let's go to the education sector and he says um, the following health training institutions were established in the regions, so he states the regions, and to further expand educational facilities and opportunities and opportunities in the regions, the following projects were undertaken, and he states those sectors. But I mean, shouldn't it be your duty to ensure the country develops as a president? Should presidents be praised for beefing up the infrastructure of the state? So let's go to Facebook. We posted that on Facebook. Let's see if we can get some of your comments. The first comment comes from Abdul Malik Akara who says, why not? Why are we all touting the achievements of Kwame Kuma? I think it is a result of the massive infrastructural projects that took Ghana to a different level. And going to Citizen Ati who says, when they learn to solve the problems of the people, they wouldn't need to spend so much time campaigning for praises through empty tours. They should stop acting as if they are doing us a favor. We accepted their applications and CV and employed them to work, so we expect them to work and the praise will come automatically. Let's go to Joseph Yani who says, we've been made to believe that we're privileged to get things we deserve. That has been our problem. If you stand for what is rude to you, you're victimized uh, for showing of a arrogance. Peter Kwarteng says, do you need to thank your wife for preparing food for you with your chop money? It takes responsible husbands to do that. So my answer is yes. Kweku comes in to say that if only they paid for it and enjoyed no benefits in return pro bono. And Edward Miller comes to say that, no, our leaders haven't done a lot for the people of Ghana and therefore need no praises. Kamla comes to say that, yes, of course, not lip service, we're sick of it. And uh, Waliku Adam says, surely it takes a wise leader to ensure necessary infrastructures are established to harness development. If you look at that, innumerable development projects executed by noble John Dramani Mahama, you would realize that they are development oriented projects and that are so capable of generating funds to pay back loans secured for their establishment. So let's see if we can get more comments on that issue. 
Quick who comes in to say that yes, they must be praised for the stewardship. And Derm Der Simone says, uh, it's unfortunate and we're all involved. That is what they used to canvas for votes. Evans Azuri says, yes, presidents should be praised for beefing up the infrastructure of the state. And those who failed to do that were rebooted out of office. And Abigail Owusu says, infrastructure is the drive any booming economy across the royal world since it, only, it also ensures employment and productive income generation and tourist attraction. Emmanuel Kweku comes and says that I don't really get the politicians or we they are somewhere. Then you just come to tell us that you can develop this country. So we should permit you to use your, our own money and resources to develop for our benefits, even steal more than you will use. But after granting them, they will come and say, I have done this and that, as if money comes from their own pockets. Uh, okay. So keep those comments coming on Facebook and Twitter. We are drawing news on TV. Abdul Malik says, why not? Why are we all touting the achievements of Kwame Nkrumah? I think it is as a result of the massive infrastructural projects that took Ghana to a different Now, the ban on small-scale mining could soon be lifted. Lands and Natural Resource Minister has hinted, John Peter Moore says, President Nana Kufuado would make an announcement to that effect soon. Let's hear what he said. The government placed a ban on small-scale mining in June last year following the destruction of water bodies, land and application of harmful chemicals such as mercury and cyanide in small-scale mining. His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado it's not against mining. What he's saying is that we will need to do the mining in a more sustainable and responsible manner. Health concerns or health issues are becoming very critical for this country. Applications of mercury is very dangerous to our own health issues. Toxic metals in our products, in our cocoa farms, in areas that we undertake farming activities is becoming a problem to this country. And so if anybody wants to undertake mining, this government is saying that you must do the mining in a more sustainable manner. It's not going to be too long, His Excellency Nana Arudankwa Akufuado will be lifting the ban on the mining. Should the ban be lifted, we asked you on Facebook. You can check that out on our page. Let's see if we can get some of your comments now onto your screens. Let's go to uh, Waliku Adams who says, Wasting taxpayers' money in the name of fighting Galamse, which eventually is going to be lifted. You have already killed businesses. And also, that comment got a reply. And Sammy Kwe says, Policy decisions demand intelligent change like this. Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister, thumbs up. Edward Miller says no. Our taxes have been wasted by anti Gallam State ta task forces. The government said he's going to create jobs. He should do that and stop lifting the ban. Abraham Smith says the ban, if it's a stone, should be lifted so that the unemployed gets something to do. Sammy Quay says, intelligent decision change. Honorable Peter Amamo, thumbs up. Valanya Akotia, our favorite commenter on Facebook, you can, says, you can prevent people from mining in waterways, but you can't stop people from mining. If you want people to stop illegal mining, grant them mining license. Give it out with ease and with less stress. Create district offices to grant them permits after thoroughly inspecting their sites. Amend the act for district reps of minerals commission to check the activities of the miners. Sign documents and grant licenses. You just don't get up one day and say, stop Galamse. It doesn't help. Tackle the administrative problems first. Aminya says, why? Please, Galamse isn't the only job in Ghana. Please don't let us think of think of day, let's think of tomorrow. Let's not think of today, let's think of tomorrow. So that's from Amin Nina. 
Now, six members of a task force ensuring compliance with the ban on noise making have been detained at the Tesano police station after a clash between them and members of the Tesano Assemblies of God Church. That report was brought to you by Maxwell. And let's see if we can get the Facebook comments. It got a lot of reactions. So let's go to Isaac who says, simple instruction, you can't obey and you claim you want to make it to heaven. I'm sorry, obedience is far better than sacrifice. Christ was a gentleman and he obeyed traditions and customs just as it was. So that comment got eight replies. But let's take more comments on that report. Uh, so Wales says, bravo to the policeman who detained them as one said, if you can control noise, then all the filth and open defecation can also be stopped. Throw your waste behind the government to make Accra the cleanest city, but not stopping only noise. Bashir Rwanda Wanda says, can they do this thing in the Ashanti region? They said no noise, so no noise. Even if it's low or high, it is noise. Respect the Ga tradition small. Felix Antri says, the task force should stop the ambulance and convoys from sounding their sirens if only they are really effective and eager to stop, make, to stop noise making. Helen comes in to say that when you go to Rome, you do what the Romans do. So far as we are in Accra, we have to obey the rules of the land. Florence Nightingale says things are going too far. I think Sundays and Fridays should be exceptional since uh, these days are for, are for worship to the re, to, to religions in Ghana. Thanks. Million says, just to base simple instructions, this festival won't last for a year. Oh, Ghana. Albert Ajay says, just obey the God tradition. And Linda says, respect the laws of the land, period. Naduku comes to say that, give to Caesar what is his, and to God what is his. Tanti says, if you go to Rome, do what the Romans do, it's simple. And Courage says, why Tessano Assembly? There are churches making more noise than that church. We're going to take a quick breather. When we come back, we'll be talking World Cup and success. Stay tuned. In 23 days, the world is just going to come together for the love of soccer. I'm talking about the World Cup. It's starting on the, Ju on the 14th of June until the Ju 15th of July. So let's go to Twitter. It's been trending. Nagana Trends. It's the 10th trend. It's been trending on Twitter. Let's see if we can get some tweets and see what people are talking about. Now, this is from at Jesse Lingard who says, I don't know what to say. Worst feeling I've felt in football to date. We didn't deserve to lose, but that's football. The fans have been amazing all season. They have stuck by us through the ups and downs, and I can only say thank you. Quick turnaround for the World Cup. Let's go. Mechi H4 says, happy that Harry Kane is captain for the World Cup. I couldn't watch Henderson with the arm band. And at underscore Ling OGB says, guess there won't be a World Cup song. I wonder what the World Cup song for this year is going to be. Because I remember the 2010 World Cup uh, song was, cha na 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 eh eh waka waka eh eh. So 2018, what do you have in store for us? Let's go to at Tom Mori0506 who says, Kane lifting the World Cup in July. And at Matador underscore Shark says, England obviously have no ambition to win the World Cup. At Smokey Ben says, my teams I'm supporting for the World Cup, France and Nigeria. If both don't do well, any other team can win apart from England. At Kristen underscore Dyer says Kane. So this is Kane saying, nothing changes. I'm the 
same person, the same player, and it's all about the team. Yes, until one of the teammates scores a crucial goal in the World Cup and he's campaigning at FIFA's doorstep, demanding he be credited with the goal. So at main man, Grizzly says, can't wait for the World Cup. It is like a massive global orgy that takes place every four years. Like I said earlier, it brings the world together. And at Howard underscore USA says, okay, so World Cup starts in 24 days. That was his tweet. So yeah, as you can see on your screens, Ghana is, uh, on the Ghana trends, the World Cup is trending. Now let's talk success. How do you measure someone's success? Who's the most successful person in your life? I mean, if you go to YouTube, what you can do, you can ask YouTube how to be successful, let's see. And it will give you a number of tips. So how to be, let's see, successful in life. It's going to load and it's going to give you a number of tutorials. So you see, we've got some success is not for the lazy, uh, how to succeed in life. Bill Gates top 10 rules for success. But I want to know how do you measure someone's success and who's the most successful person in your life? Measure success based on uh, the achievement of somebody. And Nakufuadu is one of our main presidents, is also one. Men of God like uh, James Sai and others, yes, those great men, I, I think they are very successful. In success has to do with uh, one's ability to make it in life and afterwards um, giving back to society. If the person is not able to give back to society, for me, it doesn't matter how successful that person is. Success alone is not really the best for our society, success for all rather, is what we should pursue. So I will mention Bill Gates. We have Melinda and uh, Bill, Bill and the Gates Foundation, right? They, they've been giving back to society after they've been able to make it, becoming so much wealthy in society or in life. They are giving back to society. Having some and able to feed others, I'll call such a one a successful person. Anybody who gives to others or even give more than he's having. Unity Oil. I was watching a program where he invited the windows and windows and give to them. I think the man is successful. So how do you measure success? Like I said earlier, you go to YouTube, how to be successful in life, and you'll get a number of videos. For example, this one is from Will Smith, and he says, how to be successful in life. And the funny thing is that most of them speak about the law of attraction, you know, seeing the thing before you even have it, seeing is believing and having faith. But let's go to Facebook, where you guys told us who, is, who you think is more successful. Samuel Fort says, I determine people's success according to the impact they make on other people's lives. So Boo Dennis comes to say that success can be grouped into two main categories to my own observation. The first one, the godly spiritual success and the physical success. Physically, one can be successful with money, properties, and crowd, but one can also become successful spiritually. So that can include living in the word of God wealth, properties, and crowd. If you are spiritually and physically successful, you are worth to be called a successful man, but not only with material things or to be able to take your people or having a lot of properties to show success. So hence, it's difficult to measure someone's success or you selfishly and ignorantly measure someone's success or yourself success. Only the Lord is successful for that matter. So that's Boo Dennis's comment on Facebook. Dem Der Simone says, success can be measured by maintaining a balance between one's own internal environment and that of external, meeting your daily wants and being able to live within your means. I like that, being able to live within your means. So the question we asked you on Facebook, who's the most successful person in your life? And Pogma Hamza says, the almighty Jah. Abdul Mumin says, my husband. Oh, that's lovely. And Hope Omini says, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And Kweku says, I think success may be measured by the principles of one, the environment and her or his accomplishment. But Mr. Trump is the most successful in my life. Okay. 
Emmanuel Kweku says success is relative. It depends on the individual and the environment in which the person finds himself. The social, political, educational, economical, etc. comes to play when talking about one success. Valanya Akutia says someone's success can be determined by the way he or she lives her life or his life. And Councillor Joe Blessing says myself. Okay, so he thinks he's the most successful person in his own life. Lovely. So like I said, go to YouTube, how to be successful in life. If you want to be successful, if you have your own tips, then carry on and be successful. That is all from the Tuesday edition of Join News Interactive with me, Mapisa CBD. Remember, the interactive train doesn't stop here, it continues. You can join us on Facebook and Twitter or Join News on TV. Today, I leave you with this video of the day. Are you ready for this? Yes! Ta da! Ah! Yeah, you just have one more. Friend.